With the Robert Pattinson Batman trailer getting huge buzz, it's time to look back at past live action Batmans and see which one is the best. To qualify here, you simply had to play Batman in more than one live action theatrical movie. That gives us Michael Keaton, Christian Bale, and Ben Affleck. If you haven't seen one of these before, since there are three being compared, the winner of each round gets two points and second place gets one point. Laying my cards out on the table, my personal favorite is Michael Keaton, but I would be shocked if he won. So is Batman Bruce Wayne's secret identity or is Bruce Wayne Batman's secret identity? I'm buying this hotel and uh, setting some new rules about the pool area. This is an idea that Tim Burton seemed to explore. While Christopher Nolan went all in on having Bale act like a caricature of a rich guy when not doing Batman stuff, Zack Snyder tones the idea down. But we never really see much of Affleck as Bruce Wayne. While Affleck worked as Bruce Wayne, neither Batman v Superman or Justice League really gave Bruce much to work with. This is really between Keaton and Bale. That's where it gets interesting. Keaton plays Bruce as a man being lost in the Batman persona. We see through his relationships with Vicki Vale and Selina Kyle that he's just a normal guy who really wants normal life. Do you like eating in here? Oh yeah. I don't know the truth, I don't think I've ever been in this room before. But at the same time is obsessed with the Batman. Look, I tried to avoid all this, but I can't. This is how it is. It's not a perfect world. Bale is similar, except he fully embraces his obsession to the loss of any semblance of a normal life. Alfred in both franchises serves as the hand trying to help Bruce away from the Batman and into a normal life. Michael Gould's Alfred is constantly encouraging Bruce to go out, while Michael Caine's Alfred is constantly fighting a losing battle trying to get Bruce to at least pretend he cares about not being Batman. And it also means losing someone that I have cared for since I first heard his cries echo through this house. But it might also mean saving your life. And that is more important. It would be easy to give the point immediately to Keaton for playing Bruce more naturally since Bale plays him as a joke. I would assume that Bale's outrageous antics as Bruce would be so crazy it would scream a guy hiding something. Yet over the past year, all the flamboyant behaviors of the rich have made it clear he would likely not stick out at all. Still, I have to give it to Keaton. He had a real sense of struggle balancing a normal life as Bruce and his nightlife. Bale had some urging to have a normal life with Rachel, but never truly felt like a real struggle since he made it clear throughout that Batman would always take priority. This is a close one, but for best Bruce, the winner has to be Keaton with Bale in second. Made mistakes. And then he had a... There's lights out! Now you want to get nuts? Come on! Let's get nuts. There's a lot of ways to judge this. The big question of Batman killing is a serious issue, but since that deals more of comic book accuracy, I'll leave this category more in the lane of who sold they were Batman better. Bale by far has the most going on. We see his journey to becoming Batman, something we miss with the other two. He also has the worst looking costume. No one wanted a realistic Batman as much as possible, and lots of his stuff is designed with practicality in mind. So his Batman is more real, but less stylized which is both a plus and a minus. It's not a bad look, but lacks especially in comparison to the other two. Also, Bale's choice of Batman voice was baffling and literally got worse with every movie until he became a mouth breather in The Dark Knight Returns. You don't owe these people anymore. You've given them everything. Not everything. Not yet. You can tell his interest in actually playing Batman was depleting with each outing. This brings us to Affleck, who we see as a middle-aged Batman. That being said, he is possibly the most ripped of the Batmans. He uses a voice modulator, which is quite possibly the most logical choice in the world. His suit seemed made for mobility, which means he is likely the most vulnerable of the Batmans in a fight. On the other end, Keaton's suit is the most rigid. His inability to turn his neck is very apparent. His voice is simply Keaton using a deeper voice. 
which is a simple, smart move. Both Affleck and Keaton's Batmans have more theatricality to their performances, despite the fact that Bales talks about it more. Well, well, you took my advice about theatricality a bit, literally. If we're dealing with raw realism, it's a slam dunk for Bale easy. But Batman isn't a realistic character. He's a comic book character. So which movie gave us the Batman that truly felt like a menacing figure to impose order in the streets of Gotham? There's only one clear choice. It has to be Affleck, who felt like a serious presence to reckon with. His Batman seemed designed to strike fear into everyone he encountered. And despite his performance issues, second has to go to Bale. While his presence feels smaller, when he once upon a show, he can be more than effective. Keaton was great for the time, but he's clearly borderline immobile, and his inability to move would make him weak to his enemies no matter how much armor he wears. All armor has kinks after all. Well, here I am. Time for the completely superficial. Who had the best costume? Keaton introduced the world to Batman wearing almost all black saving his belt and his logo. It is essentially a bulletproof muscle suit, but it looks great. Mobility is an issue, but they do use it to give his movements a unique look. Bale gives us a mostly black suit, which goes more in line with the realism idea. The blacker the suit, the better he can camouflage in the night. While the angles of the suit provide better mobility, it definitely has a negative impact on the look of the thing. Affleck has a gray suit with a black logo, it manages to blend in less than Bale's and have more color than Keaton's, although the color stands out a lot less. Just from a pure superficial standpoint, it has to go to Keaton with Affleck in second. Bale's looks more usable, which is good for the movies, but not for this contest. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to tell all your friends about me. What are you? I'm Batman. <laughs> All these Batmans sort of have arcs to some degree. Affleck starts as a crazy murderer, but after the death of Superman, he suddenly goes from serial killer to goofball. Well, I knew you didn't bring me back because you like me. I don't. Not. <laughs> Neither feels quite like Batman, and the change is so some between Batman vs Superman and Justice League, it feels like a stretch to call it an arc, but technically it is. Keaton is a man broken by the death of his parents. Then he meets Vicky and attempts to dump her, but doesn't and seems conflicted about what to do about his own feelings towards her. Then they split between movies and Bruce finds himself drawn to Selina Kyle. And at the end of it all, nothing ever changes. He essentially flirts with arcs, but never quite has one. Bale is a man who has been lost, looking for meaning to his life. After the death of his parents, he finds that meaning in the form of Batman, a spirit of vengeance that prowls the streets of Gotham with the hopes of preventing his fate from happening to anyone else. He sees a way out with Rachel to a normal life, but when she dies, he loses all hope. He retires to Batman for a time, being largely broken from his activities. Then Bane takes over Gotham, and he must rebuild himself to be stronger than he ever was before for one final battle, after which he has his true retirement. Let's be serious. The only one here with any serious arc at all is Bale. The trick is who gets second. Affleck's arc is so sun that seems like it really shouldn't count. But Keaton's arc really doesn't exist. He flirts with an arc. At the end of the day, judging from strictly an arc standpoint, second place has to go to Affleck for having something. What are your superpowers again? I'm rich. Key elements of comic book Batman include his detective skills, his expertise in fighting, and his no-kill rule. I have all these rules, and you think they'll save you. I have one rule. This isn't all comic book versions naturally, but the most famous one. Let's be serious. While all these Batmans have some comic book ideas to their movies, it's mostly just imagery. Only one Batman came close to following the comic book Batman, and that's Christian Bale. It's not perfect at all. Nolan clearly took the biggest ideas behind the comic book Batman and added realistic elements to it. His Batman doesn't kill, but he does cause a lot of incidental damage that does undoubtedly leave people dead, which forces the audience to ask the question of whether or not a true no-killing rule is possible with a character like Batman. He uses some detective skills, 
However, the most obvious case of this is from The Dark Knight, where he reconstructs a fingerprint off a bullet that has been shattered in the wall. Probably one of the dumbest things in the Nolan trilogy. The idea that the fingerprint would survive enough to identify anything after being shoved into a wall is insane. Of course, we see Batman become a master in martial arts during his training with the League of Shadows. Bale is the easy winner, not even going to hide that when it's crazy clear. The question of second place is again a lot harder. Both Keaton and Affleck kill quite freely. If it's a body count, Affleck makes Keaton look like Mother Teresa. Keaton actually gets to show off a lot of detective skills in his first movie when he breaks down the Joker's cosmetic scheme. The poison only works when the components are mixed. Hairspray won't do it alone, but hairspray mixed with lipstick and perfume will be toxic and untraceable. Affleck is seen putting together files on metahumans and researching kryptonite. As far as fighting, Affleck has it easy over Keaton. So Keaton is the better detective while Affleck is the better fighter. Meaning this does essentially have to come down to something as silly as a body count. Need to break the tie somewhere. Keaton is much closer to having a no kill rule than Affleck. So second place goes to Keaton. This city just showed you that it's full of people ready to believe in good. Well, this one isn't even close again, but let's go through it. If we're talking objectively, most would agree the best movie with Batman as a major character would have to be The Dark Knight. But we also have to accept that while it's a great movie with Batman, it's not necessarily a great movie about Batman. In fact, Batman is perhaps only the third or fourth most interesting character in that movie. When we ask who has the best movie, we have to ask who has the best movie about Batman. Keaton has two movies, however it's clear Tim Burton really didn't care about the Batman character and was much more focused on characters like the Joker, the Penguin, and Catwoman. I would easily argue that neither of Keaton's movies feature Batman even as much as The Dark Knight. He is largely sidelined in those movies. Affleck on the other hand didn't get any solo movies, yet is essentially the star of Batman v Superman and featured way more prominently than Batman is in either of Keaton's movies. The thing to also remember, Bale did two Batman movies that weren't The Dark Knight. They varied from good to excellent and feature Batman more prominently than any of the other contenders movies. So when we break it down and ask who has the best movies about Batman, Keaton would have Batman 89, Bale would have Batman Begins, and Affleck would have Batman v Superman. The easy winner is Batman Begins. Second is much harder, but while Batman 89 is a much better movie, Batman v Superman does explore the character of Batman, however flawed, more. So second place goes to Affleck. And for what's worth, the best theatrical Batman movie that really explores Batman is Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Took quite a fall, didn't we, Master Bruce? And why did we fall, Bruce? So we can learn to pick ourselves up. While I like Keaton best, I am not remotely shocked by these results. The Christopher Nolan trilogy easily does the best job of understanding and exploring the character of Batman. No other movie franchise really comes close. Yet. They think order and chaos are somehow opposites and try to control what won't be. Pain don't hurt. 